morning. I'm Cindy Hope, one of the elders here at Wesley Christian Church, and I'm filling in for Kelly Caldwell today. I want to give you a few minutes to get your Bible and get something to represent your communion as we as Disciples of Christ Christian Church, whenever we meet, we have communion. And even though we may not be here in the pews, we are gathering around this video. It's with sad hearts that I was told a little bit ago that Wanda Imes passed away this morning about 2.30. Of course, Kelly, our minister, is still in critical condition at the hospital and needs our prayers as well. So today, as we begin worship, we're going to light the first candle of the first Sunday of Advent on the Advent ring. This candle represents hope. With Christmas around the world, we use this light to help us Prepare our hearts and minds for the coming of God's Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. May we receive God's light as we hear the words of the prophet Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. Isaiah 9-2 The Candle of Hope Let us pray. Lord, as we look to the birth of Jesus, grant that the light of your love for us will help us to become lights in the lives of those around us. Prepare our hearts for the joy and gladness of your coming, for Jesus is our hope. We ask a special prayer for all those infected with the virus, for those who have lost loved ones due to the virus for the health care workers and doctors who take the risk each day to care for our loved ones. We pray for the scientists who are working around the clock to find a cure or a vaccine for us. We give you thanks for all these people. We pray a prayer for our nation as we come together to beat this pandemic. We especially ask your will be done in all that we do and give us the strength through Christ to do those things that you would have us to do. I pray, Lord. I pray that those watching this video today be touched by your hand and find the hope that I know that you can give them in all the trials and tribulations they might encounter through faith in you. I pray if there is someone watching the video that does not know Jesus, that you would provide that special person to help them find you. To pray the prayer you taught the disciples in the garden that goes like this. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For nine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Today, the first Sunday of Advent, we light the candle of hope, and you might expect a sermon on the coming of Christ as a Christ child. But as I looked at the lectionary today and the choices, I decided to use 1 Corinthians 1, 3 through 9, which is not of the coming of the child, but of the coming of the child the second time as the Lord and Savior. Now we can make scriptures read any way we want with our own interpretation. And I've taken that privilege today to join into this scripture, Faith and Hope. It reads like this. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I always thank my God for you because of his grace given you in Christ Jesus. For in him you have enriched in every way with all kinds of speech and with all knowledge. God thus confirming our testimony about Christ among you. Therefore you do not lack any spiritual gift as you eagerly wait for our Lord Jesus Christ to be revealed. He will also keep you firm to the end so that you will be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful 
who has called you into fellowship with the Son, Jesus Christ the Lord. Now how does this relate to hope and to faith? Maybe we should look at the definition of the two words first. Hope is defined as a feeling of expectation and desire for a certain thing to happen. You might say that similar words would be like a plan or a dream, an aim or a wish. While faith is having complete trust and confidence and a desire for a certain thing to happen in God, in a doctrine of religion based on your spiritual apprehensions rather than having proof. Now they're somewhat similar, but they're different also. Faith holds with the now, or what you might have experienced to give you a little hope to look into the future. The author of Hebrews defined it as Hebrews 1, 11, 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So faith is believing. While Jeremiah in chapter 29, verse 11, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. So faith is or hope is plans that we cannot see, but hope for the future. Now, an example might be then I could say of myself, I have the faith that God exists. And gave his sin for got his son for my sins, even though I was not there to see it. And I have the hope then that someday I can meet him face to face because of that faith. I'm trusting in God and planning for the future. So with our definitions of faith and hope, let's look at the scripture then today and find that hope in the future as well as the faith that it takes to believe in it. Paul is writing from Ephesus to the church of Corinth. He had been in Corinth about 18 months and has now moved on to Ephesus, which is just across the seaport. And then he has re received a letter from Chloe's people, as it tells us in verse 11, that the church is having problems. Now most of Paul's letters are written because another church that he has been to is having problems with whatever he taught them. But this one's having trouble with the uh, church unity among the, the members. Uh, some are saying one thing, others are saying something different. They're having trouble with Christ being crucified and in, in His coming back. His time, what does it really mean that He's coming back? Is He going to come back and perform miracles and healing? And, or is He just coming back? They're having trouble with how they use their wisdom and their power. The biggest problem, though, is their Christian freedom. They think because they have been saved that now they can go out and do anything they want and still be saved. So Paul, he's answering all these questions for them. And Paul, like most of his letters, except for Galatians, he starts with a thanksgiving. Grace and peace to you from God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. I always thank my God for you because of His grace given you in Christ Jesus. For in Him you have been enriched in every way, with all kinds of speech and with all knowledge. God thus confirming our testimony about Christ among you. Now, is Paul being sarcastic here? Grace is going to be given to the church of Corinth? These are people who were worshiping idols before they become Christians. They have turned a blind eye to sexual immorality. They have looked to the Lord's Supper as if it's only for the rich and not for the poor also. They have, they are Christians who have gone to extremes to even go to civil court over their differences. But no, 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 Paul's not being sarcastic. He knows as if because he wrote it, in fact, Romans 3.23, all have sinned and fall short the glory of God, and that we are justified freely by His grace, in Romans 3.24. So he can appreciate the faith 
Even the Christians who are falling short of, of their ideals. He's acknowledging God still gives grace even when things are not good. He has done bad things himself, persecuted Christians, but was given God's grace to be there for God. Now, in verse 5, we read that, that they, uh, the, the Corinthians had great oratory speeches and knowledge of that. And back then, in that time, there, most of the words that got around was done by someone speaking at a podium, someone speaking on the steps. It was a big deal for that person to be able to speak well. And Paul is going on with this to tell him that these gifts of wisdom uh, were not being used in the way that they should have been. They were, the people were starting to make their own rules up about Christ and and how we should live. And Paul is now coming back to them, trying to get them to understand that they have a special gift. They have a gift of the wisdom and the knowledge, and they have a gift to be able to tell other people about Christ, but do it in a way that is Christ-like. He's reminding them in their faith in Christ that their, their words can be used to further the kingdom. Just like for us today, if we're showing our faith by word of mouth to our neighbor, then we are using that gift for Christ. Now God has used Paul and his gifts among the Christians as a faith tool, as an example for them to follow. Hope that they will come back to Christ and use the gifts as they were given to them. It goes on in verse 7, Therefore you do not lack any spiritual gift as you eagerly wait for our Lord Jesus Christ to be revealed. Excuse me. <clears throat> A couple of weeks ago we talked about Thessalonians and how they uh, lacked the spiritual gift that... that uh, they were expecting Christ to come back the next day. And now Paul is kind of having to tell the Corinthians the same thing. It's 24 years after the crucifixion when he's writing this letter. And these Christians are beginning to wonder. Hope was wavering. So then faith was wavering. But Paul is saying, remain faithful. The waiting will be worth it. Hope is what was to fuel the faith. Christ coming back was a promise much hoped for by the Christians as it is for us today. Christ was a person who was promised to give them salvation. And the problem was that defining salvation in relation to saving them from the persecution they were encountering on earth was not the salvation of all times. He continues in verse 8, He will also keep you firm to the end so that you will be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Christians could rely on God at the end because they believed, not that they were blameless, but because God provided His Son to take away that blame. Paul describes further in the letter that they were definitely not blameless for God's grace. We are not blameless, but for God's grace and giving of His Son for us. We can remain firm in our belief and go out and make disciples of all nations. Verse 9, God is faithful who has called you into fellowship with His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. God is always faithful, showing faith in a community of His children that have gone astray. But they still have that privilege. We still have that privilege of being his children. The Corneth Christians had hope for the future because God was always faithful. And he is just as faithful today, 2,000 years later. 
Faith being a belief in something we cannot see. Hope being a dream or a wish. As this candle of hope was lighted this morning, many were hoping for prayers to be answered for different reasons. Healing for those suffering from the COVID virus, and the ones serving as heroes to take care of these, even risking their own lives and families. Hope is a dream that God will take care of things. Faith is a fuel that will ignite that hope in today's world. Faith is being shown even as I talk with you, there is a prayer village vigil in the parking lot for our minister who is suffering from COVID. The prayers are the spoken words of hope for the future. Faith is shown in the fact that we believe God will answer our prayers with His will, hoping that His will and ours is the same. Even as I stand here, I want our minister back with us. But I also know Kelly very well and his relationship with our Lord. And I strongly believe his words for faith and hope would be, It is well with my soul. Amen. Now, if you will get your communion, we will have our communion. It was on the night before Christ is to be crucified. He took a loaf of bread, blessed it, and broke it, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And a little while later in the service, he took the cup, he blessed it, and he said, Drink of this, all of you, for this is a new cup that poured out for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Have faith in God and live in hope for the future, and the world will be a better place. Amen.